Mayor Wagner, we are uh, very honored that you are participating in the uh, history of John Jay project. And I wanted to start off by asking you uh, how you came to be involved with the founding of John Jay, which was done at the end of your uh, term of office. Well, uh, let me just go back a little bit and uh, mention uh, uh, the beginnings of my administration, uh, elected in 1953 and took over in 1954. And my first police commissioner I appointed was an old friend of mine, Francis Adams, uh, who, uh, uh, who uh, had been the U.S. attorney here in the Southern District of New York, very able a man who had an outstanding record, and uh, I had great faith in him, and uh, he uh, certainly uh, uh, deserved all of the support that I gave him. And uh, I remember Frank Adams, when this is a little sidelight on it, when uh, prior to taking over as mayor, I was borough president of Manhattan at that time, I was announcing my new appointments, and I announced uh, Frank Adams' appointment, and of course the uh, appointment of a police commissioner was of great interest to uh, the press and to the people of the city of New York, and of course to the police department as well. <laughs> and uh, the reporters afterward, after they left the meeting with me, we had a uh, little headquarters at the old Hotel Barclay at 40, 48th in, uh, in Lexington, and uh, they asked Frank Adams to go out and introduce himself to the first policeman they could find on the corner. And they went out there and Frank Adams came up and said, my name is Frank Adams. And the officer said, my name is Wagner. <laughs> that was his start, that was his start. Uh, but um, during those, well, even in the 50s, there was a beginning to get uh, some courses, educational courses of uh, special relationship to the police work, and that was being done at um, Baruch School, at, as we know, at 23rd Street and Lexington Avenue. And uh, that was an administrative subset of, uh, of City College. And uh, Frank Adams and I talked about the need of giving greater opportunity uh, to members of the department to get further education, uh, to get uh, credits for degrees, and uh, we, we, we worked these things out at that time with Baruch. And as I said to you before, that was headed by a, a famous dean, Dean yeah. Emanuel Sachs, whose uh, son is a Supreme Court justice now, uh, David Sachs, yeah. I believe. Uh, the educational requirements for advancement in police administration, we, we were finding out, not only here but throughout the United States, steadily was increasing in the Baruch School program to uh, help continue to expand. But it was not the focus of much attention really from the administrators of either the Baruch School or City College at that time. But uh, meanwhile though within the police department uh, with my strong support, the police academy for the training of recruits and, and basic police work became increasingly important as the, and our department was growing. Uh, it had, uh, for budget reasons and uh, during the war period too, because of the uh, need to, to um, use funds in the United States for war purposes, mm -hmm. they, they, uh, there's been a depletion in the number of policemen we had and uh, we were increasing that steadily at that mm -hmm. time to get it up to the size that was uh, important. And um, during the, uh, also during that time, uh, my mayoralty, uh, corrections and the correction department became much more uh, important and uh, unfortunately because we needed more prisons at that time too as well as now. Yes. And um, it was an expanding department and um, I called on uh, a friend of my father's, a friend of mine, a wonderful woman who had great legal training. She was a judge, a magistrate of great repute, and she was socially minded as well, understanding the problems, uh, uh, Commissioner Anna Cross. And she was uh, my commissioner of corrections 
uh, for 12 years, all the mm -hmm. time that I was mayor, and she was highly regarded by everyone, and, and very importantly, she was highly regarded by the, uh, uh, by the members of the uh, cor corrections department. Mm -hmm. uh, the police academy, to get back to a minute, was, uh, came to be headed by a very imaginative uh, police captain, Patrick V. Murphy, and as we all remember, he moved on later on to become a very distinguished uh, commissioner and a good friend of mine, and then went on to Washington to greater things. And uh, during that time, too, one of my uh, third police commissioner uh, was um, a policeman who came up through the ranks named Michael Murphy, who was a brainy, professional policeman. He was very good, very honorable fellow. and. Uh, uh, still, he's retired. I still see him once a year. We have a little reunion. Really? And uh, the two Murphys, the one police commissioner and uh, the director of the academy, Pat Murphy, along with Commissioner Cross, uh, came to me at one time with a proposal to fund a police college at a baccalaureate level as part of the expanding city university. And I, I said, uh, uh, all right, we'll set it up. You go and see Al Bauka, who was the uh, uh, city university chancellor, and right. a very close friend of mine to this day. He's living back here in New York mm -hmm. now uh, with his wife. We're glad to have him. Uh, but he uh, did a terrific job as, uh, as the chancellor. And he was very uh, impressed with the idea. And uh, it became a formal proposal, and he submitted it to the his board, which is the Board of Higher Education, we all know, right. and, and oversees the work of the city university as well as some other things. And it was then headed by uh, Gus uh, Rosenberg, Gustav Rosenberg, who only recently uh, died. And the board approved the creation, of, and it was named the College of Police Science. Right. And uh, Mike Murphy, the former police commissioner who had retired, was uh, agreed to be an acting president of it to get it underway, and, and the dean uh, of the faculty, uh, Dean Donald Riddle, uh, we got him, I think you said it was Princeton, Princeton University. Yes. I know it was a, yeah. pro a professor from, uh, from New Jersey. Right. He did a very, very fine job. We were very fortunate to get him. Uh, then uh, he was there for a year as acting, and then uh, Leonard Reisman, who had been a deputy police commissioner for legal affairs in the police right. department, a very able person, agreed to be a candidate. He was selected for the full-time job at the College of Police Science, it was at that time. I gave it my full support when the city university came to submit its budget for inclusion in the city uh, budget. In the meantime, the movements were in that that we brought together our city, uh, four-year city colleges, our community colleges, the two-year colleges, mm -hmm. and Baruch School and all the others into the city university, which uh, was a very good, uh, very good idea. And I think people, uh, there was concern about it uh, at the time, uh, but I think everybody agrees it was a good move. And oh, it's uh, of educational opportunities for so many of our youngsters. My father. Uh, came over here as a little immigrant boy from Germany at the age of eight, way back in 1883, I guess. And um, his father was a janitor on the Upper East Side, 106th Street, Lexington Avenue. And uh, he would never have had an education if it wasn't for our public school system and, uh, and city college. In those mm -hmm. days, there was really free tuition. Absolutely. There. And, uh, uh, from a little boy in the first day in school, didn't know a word of English, and had uh, the hobnail boots of mm. the farmers wow. in, uh, in the Rhine country in Germany. Uh, he became valedictorian of his class in public school, and then uh, Phi Beta Kappa, president was head of his class, and, uh, and uh, uh, valedictorian at City College mm. in 1898. Wow. And uh, he was always very proud of that, and I was proud of it too. I remember in 1929, I uh, uh, received my uh, uh, answer to my application to go to Yale, and I uh, was admitted to Yale, and I showed it to him. 
and he said, congratulations, young fellow, you probably couldn't have made City College. <laughs> and I said, I think you're probably right. <laughs> but was there any controversy when, when you set up the City University? That it was well, such there, a vision that you there, had there was, that well, out of these municipal colleges could be created the City University of New yeah, York. Well, uh, there was, there was, a, there was a certain amount of it from uh, the then presidents of the various four-year colleges, mm -hmm. particularly. Uh, it was uh, how to uh, preserve their independence and yet they'd be part of a uh, of a uh, of a bigger operation. Uh, we felt that it we would, would, I think, you could give better overall uh, formulas for education by bringing them all together. Uh, they could uh, exchange uh, teachers, they could change ideas, although they were very eminent men at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, it, and there's the Queens College and City College and, and the Hunter College, and uh, um, all of them were, were, were excellent. And uh, we had to, that I remember we had to, uh, I wanted to provide a chancellor to pull them together, and I called them down to City Hall, and I said, uh, uh, now this is what we are, they were friends of mine, we were very helpful, I was very helpful to them, and they to me, and uh, I said, you go back and uh, think it out, and, and we'll have another meeting, and you can tell me what you feel the Chancellor's powers should be, mm -hmm. because there's going to be a person over them. Right. And they, they thought it out, I'm sure consulted with each other, and came back, and they gave me certain recommendations. And I, after hearing them, I said, I didn't ask you to give me a high-class janitor who was just going to see whether everything was clean and buy some books. He has to have some power. And they were very reluctant to do it. And uh, we had a number of good people who were chancellor for a while, but the real star was Al Bauka. Yeah. He was the one who pulled it together, and they all worked to very well with him, uh -huh. and, uh, and all, they all had a high regard for him, and, and it worked out. They were they were great men, uh, and uh, uh, a number of them. Uh, uh, I guess they're all probably gone now. That uh, John Ming a little while ago, mm -hmm. went to college. Uh, he died uh, some time ago. I just went to uh, within the past uh, four or five months they have a, a memorial service mm -hmm. for him. He was one of the stars, and we had a lot of good ones, Gideons and so on, mm -hmm. from, uh, from uh, Brooklyn College. Yeah. And uh, I think the city government in in uh, here in New York during the time I was mayor, and I was most familiar with that time, uh, and the budget here provided uh, the predominant portion of the budgets for four-year colleges and the two-year colleges mm -hmm. and the graduate school. Yeah. Excuse me. You were talking about the, um, the funding of uh, yeah, the city well, university right. and, and... And the two-year colleges and the graduate schools and so on and so forth. Yep, fine, graduate school. Yes. Uh, and uh, it was a very important part of the city budget and grew from year to year. And, then, uh, and now, of course, the state, particularly under uh, Governor Carey, assumed a greater... Uh, financial burden for the operation of the state of it, and uh, we did well too in working with Nelson Rockefeller when he mm -hmm. was governor. Um, well, this is uh, the sketch, uh, a little bit of my connection with the founding of the operation, which now is known as John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which yeah. uh, plays an important role in our city. And I, uh, I had a subsequent uh, unofficial connection with. John J. through I was chairman of the Citizens Commission on the Future of City University, which was created uh, back in 1972, and uh, we uh, made, I think, important recommendations to uh, the Chancellor of the City University and, and to the City University too, and, and the public officials and the public on on um, what to uh, uh, what we saw as the future of the city university, 
and uh, increased funding by the state, who, who asked for that, and, and open admissions, which supported mm -hmm. open admissions, which was controversial at that time, but yes. I think it gave so many more youngsters an opportunity to, uh, to uh, get an education. And uh, as we said, it also gave so many of them an opportunity to be citizens where they were uh, with the higher education, which is so important to mm -hmm. make a, even a greater contribution uh, to, to their city. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one of the unique uh, uh, attractions of the city of New York. And as I mentioned to you Absolutely. about my father, he would never have uh, been able to do that. Now it's difficult because education is so much more expensive. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, the, the open admissions and the, and the additional money available through ex for the, uh, the state uh, to the city university was very important too for the expansion of uh, John Jay into really a major uh, all-purpose college with a specialty, as we know, in social justice and police science and administration and in the comparable areas of corrections and of firefighting. Yes. And uh, many years I became chairman, and I suppose I still am, of an organization which we call on and organize again uh, when it's needed, the Friends of the City University, and uh, got active for a number of years in supporting the missions and the goals and the purposes of the City University and protected against us detractors and critics, yes. if we can. <laughs> so. I feel uh, that uh, in some small way I did play a part in, um, in the success and uh, I'm moving ahead uh, very, very well and every time I go there I'm on the advisory board, I'm very proud of that, I had a lump in my throat for saying, well, maybe I had a little something to do to make this all possible. Well, we at the college feel you had a great deal to do with well, making the yeah. college as successful yeah. uh, you know, as, you, as you, it is. You, the faculty and your president, uh, everybody, uh, uh, they're the ones that keep it going, and, and we're all proud of you. Well, we appreciate your support. I, could I ask you just one, one any question last question? Um, do, you, do you remember if the education of police officers was controversial in the 1950s and 1960s when Commissioner Adams first proposed it and then when um, uh, the idea of a college just for police it was, was well, proposed. Well, it was a sort of novel here and uh, I think when you do something that is new there is always a little criticism of it. People get adjusted to it. Uh, they, uh, there were some said, why does a policeman have to have a college degree? Well, as uh, time goes on, we understand it's pretty helpful mm -hmm. in the, to understand the problems because the police have, uh, as years go on, I think much more difficult time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, with modern techniques, uh, the education is very helpful to them. And um, so many of them uh, can retire. Uh, at a, at a, at an age where they can still make a contribution. And that's a good thing. And uh, to be able to have that education as well as their pension and mm -hmm. their experience in the department is very valuable. And, uh, they make uh, very good citizens and uh, administrators in various fields in the, in the private employment area. Thank you again, Mayor. <laughs> I'm delighted. <laughs>